Hello friends, today we will see why segment tree is needed to find out the sum of a range in an array. So first we will see how to find out the sum of a range in an array and then we will see why segment tree is needed. So let's see first what is sum of a range. So as you can see this is the array having elements from index 0 to index 9 that means there are 10 elements in this array and if you are asked to find the sum of elements from index 3 to 6 okay so that is so simple you will run a for loop on this array from i equal to 3 to i equal to 6 and you will just add the elements that is sum equal to sum plus array of i okay and you will get the sum in this range okay now if you are again asked to find the sum in range suppose for example 0 to 5 okay so again you will run a for loop from index 0 to 5 and you will add all the elements and you will find the sum. So if you are asked in the worst case to find the sum of range from 0 to 9 that means you will have time complexity of O of n. Means you will run the for loop for all the elements. Means you will trace all the elements in the array. So the time complexity is O of n. You are tracing n elements. You are tracing n memory locations of this array. Now what to do if we want to minimize this time complexity. So if we want to minimize this time complexity we have a solution. So I will tell you the solution. You have to take the array or an another array and you will store the sum on each position. Okay. So when building this array, you will store the sum in range. So let's see how to do that. See here, 0 location is 5. Then on the first location, on the first index, you will store 5 plus 2, that is 7. 5 plus 2 is 7. Then again on the second index, you will store 7 plus 1, so 8. Simply this means that from 0 to 2, what is the sum of the elements? See here, 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 1 is 8. Okay, now for the third index, 8 plus 3, so 11. Okay, for the fourth index, 11 plus 4, so 15. Then for the fifth index, 15 plus 6, 21. Then 21 plus 7, 28. 28 plus 9, 37. Then 37 plus 8 is 45. And 45 plus 3 is 48. Okay. Now what happens is that if you want to find the sum in range from 3 to 6 as we had the query for sum in range from index 3 to 6. So let's go here. You can directly find the sum in range by accessing only two memory locations. Okay. So how do we do that? Let's take a simple example now. Suppose there is an array 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay. Suppose the same array is represented as the sum array, sum of elements. So 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10 and 10 plus 5 is 15. Okay. Let us first give index here 0, 1, 2, 
3 and 4. So if you want the sum from range 1 to 3, in range 1 to 3. So if you want the sum from 1 to 3 in this range, that sum is 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 is 9. Okay, that sum is 9. Just remember. Right. Now I will show you by calculating here. See 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Now if you want the sum from range 1 to 3, you have to take the third memory location and you have to take the 0th memory location. Means if you want to find the sum from range L to R, okay, then you have to take the value from A of R that is the third memory location here. See L is 1, R is 3. So the third memory location is A of R and you have to subtract A of L minus 1 from it. You have to subtract A of L minus 1 from that. So L is 1. So you have to subtract A of 0. So what is A of 0? It is 1. So see here 10 minus 1. So your answer is 9. See here what is the sum in this range? 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 is 9. Yes. So our answer is correct. Right. Similarly, if you want to find the sum in the range 3 to 6, then you have to take value at memory location 6, that is A of 6, means A of R, minus A of L minus 1. So what is L here? L is 3. So L minus 1 is 2. So A of 2 means 28 minus 8 that is 20 see 28 minus 8 that is a of 2 so that is 20 that means the sum in range from 3 to 6 is 20 see what we achieved here is that if we want to calculate the sum in this array in which only elements are stored then you will have to trace four positions means four memory locations then you have to add the elements at those memory locations but in this way if we store the array as sum of the range from 0 to that index then you need to access only two memory locations so the time complexity is constant that is O of 2, 2 memory locations. So if I want to set constant time complexity I will write here O of 1. So that is constant time complexity whatever is the range. Suppose you want to find out the values in range 1 to 8. So now it does not matter what is the range means 1 to 8 there are 8 elements. So, we should not go to 8 memory locations. We need to go to only 2 memory locations as per our formula in this sum of range array. So, let's see what are those memory locations. As you know the formula A of R minus A of L minus 1. That means we have to go to A of 8 because R is equal to 8. So, A of 8 minus a of L minus 1. So what is L? L is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. See here in this array A of 8 minus A of 0. So 45 minus 5 is 40. So 45 minus 5 is 40. Okay. That means the sum in range from 1 to 8 is 40. Okay. We were able to find out the sum in that range by accessing only two memory locations because of this array in which we have stored the sum of range for every element from 0 to that index. Okay. So now 
if you want to find out the sum in range from 0 to some index suppose 0 to 7 then there is no need to use this formula also because each position or each memory location in this array stores the sum from 0 to that index so if you are asked to find the sum in range from 0 to 6 then directly go in this array and return 28 the sixth memory location value is 28 because that memory location itself store the value from range 0 to that index okay so that's how this query works if we have the array now there is a twist in this method so the twist is that if you are asked to update this array means suppose you are asked to change the element at index 5 means if at runtime if the element at index 5 is updated from 6 to suppose 8 then in this array if we have stored the elements as sum in the range then in this array for each position from fifth to the last index you have to add the elements again means you have to add the part which is extra means previously here if it was 6 and now it is 8 it is updated to 8 that means it is plus 2 okay so you have to make plus 2 to every position from index from 5 to the last index so you have to access all the memory locations again from 5 to 9 in the worst case if you are asked to change the first element this position that is the zeroth index as the first element is 5 we are asked to change this element from 5 to 10 suppose means previously this element was 5 and it is updated to 10 means plus 5 then you have to add plus 5 to every position from 0 to 9 it can also be negative operation means uh, this element may be changed from 3 to 1 means minus 2 so you have to subtract 2 from that position to the last index means in the worst case you are accessing n positions again so the time complexity for update operation in the worst case is o of n in runtime if there are many update queries then this method does not prove to be efficient what i want to say is that if range queries are limited but update queries are more update queries are more there are more update queries then this approach does not prove to be efficient if in the other way if there are very less update queries and many range queries then this approach proves to be efficient but if there are more update queries then this does not prove to be efficient now in this case what comes to our help is segment tree so let's see how to prepare this segment tree and how will it help us in range queries and update queries now we will see how to construct the segment tree and it is explained in this suggested video